More local now. This is Wave 3 News. Another request for ivermectin to treat a bad case of COVID. This one in Louisville. But the judge calls the internet rife with ramblings and outright falsehoods when it comes to the anti-parasitic drug. And that Louisville judge denied the use of ivermectin to a man with COVID at Norton Health Brownsboro. Thank you for joining us for Way Through News at 11. I'm John Bowl. And I'm Shannon Kogan. The COVID patient's wife filed the motion in Jefferson County Court. Way Through News reporter Jared Cavaltiera has more on this lawsuit. According to the lawsuit, the patient's wife was a nurse at Norton Health and uses her stature saying if it came down to it, she would administer the antiparasitic drug to her husband. She cites studies and other op-eds supporting her claim that ivermectin is effective against COVID, but the court ruled against it. Handwritten motions show Angela Underwood trying to get the court's order to treat her husband with ivermectin. According to the emergency injunction order Underwood filed, Norton Healthcare Brownsboro Hospital won't treat a COVID patient with the antiparasitic drug unless a judge signs off and a doctor agrees to do it. Underwood lobbies saying she is Lonnie Underwood's health care advocate. And, quote, whether by a Norton physician, another health care provider of my choosing, including myself if necessary, will administer ivermectin. The once Norton Healthcare nurse went on to submit data of 63 studies on ivermectin and its effectiveness against COVID-19 and includes a published op-ed from a doctor citing the need to use the drug. But Judge Judith McDonald Berkman orders Underwood to get a doctor who can sign off with a medical need for ivermectin and vitamin C. Only Underwood found a doctor who isn't eligible to administer the drug to Mr. Underwood. Therefore, because Ms. Underwood says time is of the essence, the ruling ended up falling into Judge Cunningham's court, who gave Underwood two options. Remove Mr. Underwood from Norton Health Brownsboro or allow the establishment she once worked for and elected to take her husband to to treat him the best way they know how. This is seemingly the only local instance of a family suing a health care system for not administering ivermectin. In, in, in Cincinnati, a judge did allow a COVID patient to get ivermectin, but in that case, there weren't any remaining options for the patient who had less than a 30% chance to live. At last check, that patient is still alive. In studio, Jerica Valtiero, Wave 3 News. President Biden is meeting with CEOs from the world's biggest companies to help them try to implement his strict new vaccine mandates for the nation as the FDA is set to weigh whether or not to officially recommend COVID-19 booster shots. John Lawrence has the latest. Last week, I laid out a six point plan uh, uh, for the fall to beat this pandemic and uh, it's based on what science tells us. President Joe Biden touting his administration's aggressive COVID-19 vaccination mandates in a meeting with CEOs and other leaders from some of the world's biggest corporations who are now working to implement the new requirements. And the Labor Department is working on emergency rule to require all employers with 100 or more workers to ensure their workers are fully vaccinated and regularly tested. And uh, it's going to take a little bit for them to put those requirements in place under the law. Biden is doubling down on his vaccine mandates that have received heavy pushback, mostly from Republicans, saying they will save lives, jobs and keep the economy going. And to make sure we keep businesses open and workers safe. But no employer should try to play games. Uh, because this is too serious. This as the FDA's vaccine advisors are set to vote this Friday on whether or not to officially recommend a booster shot of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. That combination of kind of a waning immunity and the Delta variant uh, is what is, has led us to need to consider this need for boosters or, or third doses. I'm John Lawrence reporting. 